Over the years, we've received a lot of calls from people who let an infestation get out of hand because they didn't know what they had were actually bed bugs. So in this video, we will explain once and for all what bed bugs look like and how to distinguish them from other household pests. Bed bugs are small. An adult bed bug measures around a quarter of an inch or four to seven millimeters, about the size of a flax seed or a small apple seed. They can be tan, reddish brown, or dark brown depending on their life stage and how recently they fed. Baby bed bugs, also known as a bed bug nymph or instars, start off yellowish white and transparent, and as they grow, they become more brown. An adult bed bug that hasn't fed in a while is more tan in color. A bed bug that has recently fed will appear more red. Once the blood is digested, it becomes a dark colored mass that you can see in their abdomen. The best way to identify a bed bug is by taking a closer look at their shape and morphology. Bed bugs have six legs and two antennae, as all insects do. Their antennae are made up of four segments and they're rather short compared to their legs and the rest of their body. Their body shape is also quite unique. They have a wide oval shaped abdomen that is normally quite flat and somewhat shaped like an apple seed. You should be able to make out the lines running horizontally across its abdomen, which are called sclerites. After they're done feeding on blood, the abdomen stretches out lengthwise until it's about half an inch long. Lastly, the shape of its head is a useful diagnostic feature at the very front, between its eyes and antennae, there's a part that's extended out and looks sort of squared off. This contains tube-like mouth parts, the proboscis, which it uses to pierce the skin and drink blood. Right behind its head is a short but wide dorsal plate called the pronotum. It's convex at the front and has wide, rounded edges that flare out on both sides, and it's quite distinctive when you're looking at a bedbug. Here's Lou Sorkin, a board-certified entomologist, explaining how he identifies bed bugs based on the images sent in by actual clients. Okay, yeah, this um, is an adult bed bug as an insect that has six legs, and it has two antennae. And the head uh, shape and eyes are very distinctive for bed bugs. It's a little extension that sticks out between the eyes, and it's squared off. That's the base part of the rostrum or its beak. In this specimen, it's an adult female. You can see the dark material inside that's digesting blood in its gut. Uh, the pronotum has that flare at the front section on either side where the eyes are. Yeah, and this nymph here is a bed bug that's just fed. You can see how engorged the body is uh, and it, a reddish coloration, you're seeing it right through more or less translucent body wall. So now that you know what a bed bug looks like, here's how we tell them apart from other similar looking pests that you might find around the house. Cockroach nymphs, or baby cockroaches, are probably the number one pest that's most often mixed up with bed bugs, simply because cockroaches are so common, especially here in New York City. Adult cockroaches are pretty easy to recognize but when they're young, they don't have wings, and their bodies can be pretty close to bedbugs in terms of size, shape, and color. If you look closely enough, cockroach nymphs have long thread-like antennae, which is the easiest way to tell it's not a bedbug. Their body shape also tends to be longer and narrower, with a wide head that's rounded in the front. They also have longer legs than bedbugs, with a characteristic spiny appearance, whereas bedbugs' legs are thin and smooth. And at the rear of its abdomen, cockroach nymphs have these two stubby appendages called cerci that stick out and are easy to see. You can see on this cockroach nymph uh, the two cerci, and you have a wide head, not a pointed head, and you have a very slender, uh, long antenna. You don't see individual four segments for the antenna, which would be on bed bugs. Carpet beetles are another insect that gets mixed up with bed bugs a lot because they're about the same size and have an oval shape. These pests normally live outside, but they sometimes get into homes and their larvae will feed on carpets, clothing, and other animal-based materials. There are a few species of carpet beetles that you might encounter. Varied carpet beetles and furniture carpet beetles usually have a mottled pattern of white, brown, and yellow markings covering their body. Black carpet beetles, however, are harder to tell because they have a solid brown color and similar oval shape to bedbugs. They're typically more rounded and not as flat as bedbugs, with a hard shell characteristic of beetles. 
You can tell them apart by looking at the back of their abdomen, which is made up of two large wing covers, or elytra, that meet in a line going down the middle. Bed bugs don't have these wing covers, so instead, you should be able to see those horizontal lines on its abdomen. Like most beetles, their heads are also turned downwards and often hidden underneath their shell. They also have shorter antennae than the bed bugs that are clubbed at the ends. Yeah, this looks more like a black carpet beetle or something related. The antenna are short and stubby and have a little knob at the end, so bed bugs don't have that type of antenna at all. Uh, the overall shape, that's I think why people think it's a bed bug because it has that sort of rounder or sub oval kind of shape. Other than that, there's no other characteristics that would tell you this is a bed bug though. Sometimes carpet beetle larvae are also mistaken for bed bugs. Normally their larvae look very distinct, like a plump little caterpillar and they're covered with long hairs and bristles called seedy. Bed bugs don't have these bristles, so seeing them can help you rule out bed bugs right away. Yeah, they rule out bed bugs because it's it has these bristly things which bed bugs don't have sticking out like that. And this could be a larva that's ready to molt because it's kind of chubby looking. Spider beetles are small, round looking beetles that can be found in dark places with lots of moisture. Usually they're slightly smaller than bed bugs, around an eighth of an inch, but looking at them from above, their shape makes it easy to mistake them for bed bugs because of their wide abdomen and small head. But like cockroaches, spider beetles have long antennae that are around the same length as their bodies, which you can use to rule out bed bugs. Their abdomens are also round and globular, not flat, which sometimes makes people think it's a fed bed bug. This particular uh, gibium Spider beetle is often found a lot in homes and misidentified as being a bed bug. The body is sort of a pear shape, um, which people think, yes, it's engorged with blood. That's why it's enlarged. But once you get to look at it, you see the legs are very heavy and the antenna are long. So it's very unlike a bed bug antenna. These are multi-segmented, the bed bug antenna four segment. Fleas sometimes get mixed up with bed bugs because they can also bite humans. Not to mention, both are small, reddish brown, and wingless. It's actually pretty easy to tell fleas apart from bed bugs, though. Fleas are pretty unique in that they're vertically flattened. Bed bugs, and most insects, are flattened dorsal ventrally, which means that they lay flat on their stomachs. Fleas, however, lay flat on their sides. This body structure helps them navigate their way through dense coats of hair, like on a dog or a cat. So if you see a small dead bug that's laying on its side, and you can see its legs sort of all on one side, then you can be pretty sure it's a flea and not a bed bug. The uh, flea is very different from all the insects we've seen so far, because a flea is laterally flattened, a right and left side. Yeah, it has very spiny legs also, flattened a bit, dark, little tiny head. You don't see the antenna sticking out. They're actually folded back inside grooves on the head. Like bed bugs and fleas, ticks also bite humans. When they do, they swell into a round, bulbous shape, not like a bed bug, which becomes long and football shaped. Another distinguishing feature of adult ticks is that they have eight legs, not six. That's because ticks aren't actually insects, they're arachnids, and they're related to spiders and scorpions. Baby ticks, however, have six legs. They grow their last pair once they reach adulthood. Besides the number of legs, you can also tell a tick apart from a bed bug because it doesn't have that characteristically flared out pronotum that bed bugs have behind their heads. Now here's an engorged tick. It has a, a, a non-insect body with eight appendages that are obvious, and those are eight legs on this adult tick. Book lice sometimes get confused with bed bug nymphs because of their size and color. These light colored, somewhat translucent insects are wingless, smaller than a quarter of an inch, and are usually found in places with lots of moisture or mold. They also feed on starchy material like glue in book bindings, which is where they get their name from. Like cockroach nymphs and spider beetles, book lice also have long, thin antennae, while bed bugs have short, somewhat stiff-looking antennae. Their bodies are usually longer and more slender than a bed bug nymph, and they have a wide head that's separated from their abdomen by a narrow thorax. Their legs are also longer than a bed bug's, and their last pair of legs have a thick, muscular-looking femur. If you take a closer look at the head, you can see that the book lice have a large, smooth bulge at the front called a clapeus, which is their upper lip. The book louse just looks like a book louse. It's 
typically has very slender, long filamentous antenna along with the protuberant upper lip. And you have a small area behind the head that connects to the abdomen. The thoracic area is narrow in this insect compared to a bed bug, compared to a cockroach especially. Hill bugs and sow bugs normally live outdoors in damp, shady areas with lots of soil and vegetation, but occasionally one might find its way indoors through small cracks or gaps. Certain species of pill bugs and sow bugs can appear similar to bed bugs in terms of their size, color, and their overall oval shape. But unlike bed bugs, these guys aren't really insects. They're crustaceans. The biggest tell is that they have way more legs than a bed bug does, 14 in fact, compared to the bed bug's six. Their shells also have very distinctive looking plates that allow them to roll up their bodies when threatened. In many sow bugs, these plates have jagged looking edges that you won't find on a bed bug. They also have long, thick looking antennae with many segments, and sow bugs also have two additional tail-like appendages sticking out from the rear. You can see the uh, body segmentation is not continuous and just not smooth like that of the bed bugs. And you can see how heavy the antenna are and stubby. If you turned it over, you'd see the number of leg appendages here are way more than an insect has. Bat bugs aren't really that common, but they're the closest in actual appearance to bed bugs. Unlike bed bugs, though, bat bugs don't usually bite humans. They can, but their main hosts are bats, and they're usually found only in homes with bats roosting in the attic or other nearby areas. To the naked eye, bat bugs and bed bugs are virtually identical. The main identifying feature that we look for is the short, fuzzy hairs covering its body, which are called the seedy. Bed bugs also have these hairs, or seedy, but they're so short and sparse that they're almost imperceptible. Bat bugs, on the other hand, have long, dense hairs that are longer than the diameter of their eyes. These hairs are especially prominent around the edges of the bat bug's pronotum and abdomen. I mean, it looks like a bed is the same family. So it has a characteristic antenna, head, thorax, a pronotal shield behind the head, isn't as flared as that of the common bed bug, but it's a much hairier insect. Uh, you can see somewhat how long the hairs or seedy are, especially on the outside edge of the pronotum compared to the size of the eye. And on bed bugs, you wouldn't have very long CD there at all. Hopefully this video has given you a better understanding of what bed bugs really look like and how to tell them apart. So if you do have bed bugs, you'll be able to identify them and take action quickly to get an inspection or exterminate them. If you have any questions, or if you're still not sure if what you've found is a bed bug or not, you can send a picture to MMPC's free pest identification service, which is linked in the video description below and one of our experts, like Lou, will help identify it for you.